Just come down to the club lake just to hopefully get a bit of fish catching action to show off Diwa's new nets and we couldn't have hoped for a quicker bite really we've barely been here 10 minutes when I've had the first one a little scaly mirror and then it can't have been a minute or two after getting this rod back out as long as they go straight back out there same sort of area and I've got a bite literally, like I say, within, within a minute or two of it landing in the water. So for now, I'm just going to concentrate on getting this fish in. So it looks like that lead's not actually come off because it's all wrapped up in weed. It feels like a bit of a better fish. So let's hopefully get it in the net. And we'll go from there. Well, whilst I was sat there, I was just trying to get the, uh, the hook out, but he's properly nailed there. So all I'm gonna do is just cut the hook link so I can get the rod back out. Like I said last time, as you can see, that worked out for the best. Yeah, another nice fish, a bit bigger than the other. Nice little pearly scales down by its tail. Typical of the sort of fish in this lake. So I'll get him staked out and get that rod straight back out there. Right, well the zig's back out there and fingers crossed for another one but just in case that does go i'll make sure to get this smaller fish out get the picture sorted get the net back together just in case it does go so we'll get them out now and take a look there you go first one of the session lovely little mid double mirror Lovely, lovely fish in this lake. There's a slightly bigger one in the other net. So we'll slip this one back after a few shots and then get the other one out. There you go, the bigger of the two. Really, really lovely old fish, this one. Again, pretty typical of this lake. Big, chunky, gnarly head. Nice scales scattered all over his body and these lovely little pearly scales on him. Well happy with that lovely start to the year. And you may well notice that it's starting to get dark. So we'll get him slipped back, but it's a bloody good job that we have the Daiwa crosscast land and retain nets and after staking that out, Joe had two carp, so we've been dealing with that as well. But yeah, happy days. Let's get him back and go have a look at Joe's. Well, what better way to start the session than two quick bites? And the whole purpose of coming down to film was to check out Dyer's new landing net. This is the Crosscast LR net, and that stands for Land and Retain. Basically, the whole premise of the Land and Retain system is that it's got a spike on the end, which effectively means that you can drive into the ground once you've landed your carp and you can leave the fish in the landing net, safe in the knowledge that it's not going to escape. Whilst you sort your rig out, get back out onto the spot, get your various, your unhooking mat, maybe your waistling and everything, all prepped, ready to go without ever having to actually take the carp from the water in the first place. So with all of this in mind, Dyer have actually implemented a few key features on their new net, which makes this whole process really nice and simple. So to start off with, as I mentioned, it's within the Crosscast range. And one of the things that you'll know about the Crosscast range, if you own the rods, for instance, is that the blanks are very thin. And the blanks are particularly thin on this landing net, not only to match in with the Crosscast rods, but also because being thinner means that it's gonna drive into the ground a lot easier. They've also moved 
the shrink wrap section, which you typically get at the very base of the landing net, they've moved that up a little bit, leaving some exposed carbon right at the very end. Then, like I say, at the very end, you've got a nice thin spike, really, really hard wearing, and that's so that you can drive into the ground. And by moving that EVA, or rather the shrink wrap, a little bit further up, you've got that section of bare carbon, which is going to drive into the ground, and it's also going to mean that you're not going to get mud, silt, clay and stuff all up that handle that you're then going to be holding. Dyer also supply a little neoprene sheath, which you can cover up that spike with when it's not in use. The final main change that they've also made is that they've slightly lengthened the actual net itself. So this means that once it's propped up, you've got plenty of space for the carp to sit comfortably in the net in the water. Obviously, you're not gonna be retaining them with the net upright like this and the carp hanging out here out of the water. You're gonna be pushing it into the ground at quite a shallow angle, but having a little bit of extra length in that net is gonna mean that that carp can find a nice comfortable position to sit in. A few final features as well to just go through is that thin carbon pole has got a 3K weave, got a little extra section of shrink wrap here, which gives you just a bit of a gripping point for when you're holding the net. And then you've got a really solid machined spreader block here. The arms fit directly into the really nice, small, lightweight spreader block. And that's one of the key things as well. The whole net itself is extremely lightweight, meaning that it's really, really easy to maneuver when it's in the water. So there you go, a few simple changes actually make this product a really, really usable bit of kit. And if you find yourself in that sort of situation where you just want to quickly retain those carp whilst you sort your kit out, maybe get that rod back onto the spot, maybe fishing places where you can build hits of fish, then being able to do so is a really, really handy thing to be able to do. And these changes just make that a really simple process. So there's not a great deal more to say. It's a single piece handle, 42 inch landing net, and yeah, Really nice bit of kit, so if you want to check it out, head over to the Dio website, diocarp.com.